Hi, my name is Dylan, and I'm going to be teaching you some lab techniques today. Um, so, my field right now is molecular biology and protein purification, so I'm going to be mainly in this series talking about those sort of techniques. Um, but if there are other techniques that anybody would like to learn, uh, send them to me, uh, and maybe we could work something out with a fellow uh, grad student or PI. I'm a fourth year PhD student um, getting my degree in biochemistry. So yeah, I'm basically going to be teaching some very basic lab techniques at this point and I'm hoping that uh, people will find these useful. Uh, I know that when I first started working in labs I really would have found some uh, tutorials useful for just new techniques, bringing new techniques into the lab or things like that. And hopefully uh, there will be some people out there that will find these videos useful. So today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, transforming some uh, DNA, some plasma DNA, into competent cells. And I'm just going to kind of walk you through that, and hopefully we can learn something. So, um, as always, when you're working with DNA, um, you want to glove up. You don't want to risk contamination. Um, and I'm just going to preface this video with saying that like many other scientific techniques, this involves a lot of waiting, a lot of incubation time. So we're just going to cut those out and we'll kind of skip from your actual action point to action point. So let's get started. So to start now, we have uh, some cells, some competent cells. These are actually um, lab-made competent uh, XL1 blue cells. We have our template DNA, which we've specced, so we know the concentration of it. Um, I'll be making another video to show you actually how to make these competent cells. They were made competent uh, using a calcium and rubidium um, uh, method, and not electroporation or just a straight calcium chloride method. Uh, we have a 100 microliter aliquot of the cells. And to that, I'm going to be adding, I'm going to be adding, so to those cells, I'm going to be adding um, 100 nanograms of my DNA, which in this case is going to be 4 microliters of my template DNA. So you want to, of course, wait until all your stuff is thawed on ice. That takes anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. And then you add your DNA to your cells. I've had it up and down a couple times. And then you're going to put it back on ice for 15 minutes. At this point, you can also put your template DNA back in the freezer um, because you're not going to not going to need it anymore. So while this incubation is going on. Uh, it's also a good idea to make sure that you have a water bath set to 42 degrees or a heating block set to 42 degrees and that you also have an incubator shaker that's set to 37 degrees. Also, you're going to want to get your plate out that you're eventually going to be plating your transformed cells onto and put it in the incubator. While this is not a necessary step, it really can uh, really save you some trouble because if you plate directly on a cold plate and then stick in the incubator you can get some issues with condensation and your plating might not go as well as it could. So make sure that you get a plate out that has the same uh, um, select selectant as your plasmid. So for example um, I'm using ampicillin resistance to select for the transform cells so make sure that you're using an amp plate. If you have ampicillin and canamycin resistant, of course you want to do an amp can plate. Um, so just make sure that your your plasmid resistance matches the plate that you're going to be transforming onto. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes. Now we're going to take our cells with the DNA in them and we're going to stick them at 42 degrees for two minutes. Right, a nice little heating block. It's been equilibrated to 42 degrees. Now, um, these steps, this this uh, heat shock and then post heat shock cooling, uh, will vary depending on what type of cells you have. And it's important to check 
that if you're using store-bought cells to make sure that you use the right times here because these times vary depending on what type of cells you are you're using and how competent they are since these are lab made cells this is what we've uh, figured out just here empirically in the lab works the best for this timing so after two minutes we then take it out of the heating block put it back on ice and we're going to put it on ice for three minutes so after you've done that and your cells have been chilling on ice for three minutes then you're going to want to add LB buffer or LB broth sorry LB is commercially available uh, but I'll also include a recipe for it uh, in the description so you're going to want to take your tube with your DNA and your cells and add, I like to add uh, 100 microliters of LB to this 100 microliter aliquot. Um, you can use SOC, just make sure it's sterile if you're going to use that. Um, but LB, I've found, works just fine. So, you're going to want to take your cells, I like to use a little bit of tape here, and you're going to put them into an incubator shaker. Um, you know, you want it to put it, and you want the incubator shaker to be at 37 degrees, and I like to shake it at about 300 RPMs. Mm, yeah, that's pretty good. So, um, now you're going to want to let it sit there in the shaker for about an hour. It doesn't have to be an hour. It can be as little as 30 minutes or as much as two hours, but I... I find that about an hour really works the best. And what you're doing now is you're allowing the cells to grow and divide before you actually select for the antibiotic. So we're just gonna let that go for an hour and then we'll come. Okay, so it's been an hour. Uh, we've got our cells and DNA now hopefully incorporated and they've had a chance to reproduce a few times and grow a little bit. Now what we're going to do is you just want to pipe that out, that cell DNA mixture. You're going to open up your plate. Now this is an AMP plate, uh, ampicillin bearing uh, LB auger plate. And you're just going to squirt that on your cell suspension. I like to use these loop spreaders, um, but depending on your lab, you might use something else and you just spread it around. You want to get a nice even coverage over all the plate so that you get a nice spread of colonies when your cells actually grow. So now what you're doing is you're going to be selecting for antibiotic resistance. Basically the ampicillin in the plate is going to kill the cells that haven't incorporated the ampicillin resistance gene and it'll leave the cells living that have incorporated the uh, ampicillin resistance gene. So, we're now going to take our plate and we're going to go over here, stick it in our incubator that's at 37 degrees, and we're going to set it there uh, bottom side up, so auger on top, uh, lid on the bottom, I'm going to set it in there for a good 12 to 18 hours. This is one that I did uh, yesterday. I just want to show you guys what this is going to look like if it's done correctly. If it's done correctly, you end up with these beautiful little punctate colonies all over your plate. And each one of those colonies is a uh, specific growth of a, of a certain cell that uh, incorporated the ampicillin resistance gene. So, that's how you do a transformation. Good luck, happy sciencing. I'm back to my